Hello everyone. In this pre presentation, I want us to discuss induction of labor and we'll start by defining what is induction of labor. It is nothing more than the artificial initiation of labor and we do it when we feel that delivery of the mother is more beneficial both to the mother or to the baby compared to continuing the pregnancy. Why do we go? Why do we induce labor? Well, one of the most common indications for induction of labor is hypertensive disorders of pregnancy in all their form. Remember, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy can be classified as chronic hypertension. We've got gestational hypertension or pregnancy-induced hypertension. We've got preeclampsia. We also have eclampsia and we also have preeclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension. All of these, for all of these, there is no role for conservative management after 37 weeks. So for all hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, after 37 weeks, we don't have a role for conservative management. Once we reach 37 weeks, we are supposed to we are supposed to deliver because it is more beneficial for the baby and for the mother that she is delivered than that she continues with the pregnancy. Diabetes is also one of the common indications for hypertensive disorders, sorry, for, for induction of labor. What happens, what happens with diabetes is that as we approach 36, 37, 38, there is a tendency to lose these babies. So with judicious, with judicious um, advice from senior, from senior doctors, we usually induce diabetic mothers as they approach 37, 38 weeks. Post deaths, which is really when the pregnancy goes beyond the expected date of delivery, we are advised to induce the labor but the induction is not done on the actual uh, day that she goes post death. We do it at 41 weeks. Remember that the expected date of delivery is calculated from the last menstrual period until the time that the pregnancy is 40 weeks. So the expected date of delivery is 40 weeks from the last menstrual period. Abruptual placenta, which is premature separation of a normally implanted placenta, is also one of the indications for induction of labor. <coughs> when we talk of premature rupture of membranes, we have to think of two aspects. There's a premature rupture that happens before term, and there's premature rupture that happens after term, but before the initiation of labor. So when it happens after term, but before the initiation of labor, we call it term premature rupture of membranes but most of the time we just call it prom and when it happens before term it is known as preterm premature rupture of membranes so in prom what is important to know is that 90 percent of the women that rupture membranes before they go into labor but after their term 90 percent of them will go will eventually go into labor within 24 hours that is very important to take note 90 percent of the women who who develop prom will go into labor within 24 hours the small percentage of women that do not go into labor have got a risk of infection have got a risk of chorioamnionitis and these are the women that were obliged to induce the labor IUFD is also one of the common indications for induction of labor. Before we induce an IUFD, it is always advisable to do the basic investigations that may point us towards what is the cause of the IUFD. In itself, IUFD is not an emergency. Once we have an IUFD, there's always a temptation to deliver as soon as possible but it has to be done in consultation with the mother and anyway most of the women will consent to delivery as soon as they are aware that the the, the baby has demised 
logistical reasons really refers to uh, conditions where the the mother wants the baby delivered um, for her own convenience there isn't an obstetric reason to deliver but just for her own convenience maybe she wants to have the same birthday as her baby and she requests for an induction so really that one will just be for uh, logistical reasons contraindications to uh, induction of labor may be absolute or may be relative for example a previous design section in our environment it should be an absolute contraindication to induction of labor i say it should be an absolute because you find some uh, medical practitioners who do induce previous cesarean section and that is dangerous practice eh? high parity high parity um we induce high parity for example with with a catheter with a with a balloon catheter you may induce a high parity but with prostaglandin such as misoprostol it is contraindicated there's a high risk that she will rupture because of hyperstimulation of the of the uterus women that have had a, an operation on the uterus uh, it is not advisable for them to be induced malpresentations such as a breach is not advisable to induce a breach uh, there may be controversy here and there but generally you know when you have conditions such as such as breach you have conditions such as uh, twin pregnancy it is advisable that you don't induce because uh, the breach or the or the multiple pregnancy in itself is telling you that something is wrong there something something is not right so if you if you induce that labor you are adding risk to a pregnancy that is already risky and you are not really sure of the of the outcome of a breach of a multiple pregnancy so you inducing the labor is you adding risk to a pregnancy of which the outcome is not very clear transverse lie well a transverse lie will not come out because most of the time it is a shoulder that is presenting so you know you can't induce a transverse lie and a large baby for obvious reasons cannot be induced and when you don't have consent especially consent for a cesarean section it is advisable that you don't induce take a take an example of a woman who's got hypertension and you've decided that you want to induce her labor it is important it is very important that you cancel her also that should the induction fail you will go ahead and do a cesarean section so if, if she doesn't consent for a cesarean section you do not do the induction of labor because you'll be stuck imagine you've taught someone that you're going to induce the labor and in in her mind in her mind she doesn't have that concept of failed induction she's sure that she's going to deliver vaginally but she fails to deliver vaginally you failed to achieve your vaginal delivery so then you need to go for cesarean section because you need to well you need to deliver her you've, de you've decided that it is better to deliver her so then you'll be stuck there so every time that you're going to induce a woman keep in mind that there's a certain percentage of women in whom induction will fail and those women have to go for cesarean section and so they have to consent for cesarean section as they consent for induction of labor so the bishop's score well, the bishop's score is a tool that we use to predict the likelihood of success for induction of labor it's got five parameters and those parameters include dilatation of the cervix the length of the cervix that uh, uh, in some previous in some previous literature you find the length of the cervix being used as effacement which is sort of not being used these days cervical consistency the position of the cervix and the station and the station of the pre, of the head so the dilatation of the cervix can either be closed or it can be 
5 centimeters and above anything in between and to each of those parameters you add a score for example if a dilatation is 1 to 2 the score is 1 if a dilatation is 3 the score is 5 and so you go on like that if the cervical for example if the cervical position is posterior the score is 0 if the cervical position is midline the score is 1 if the station of the head the station of the head refers to where the presenting part is in relation to the ischial spines to the ischial spines of the of the maternal pelvis so if the station is at negative 3 your score is 0 if your station is from plus 1 or plus 2 your score is 3 so when you aggregate these scores when you aggregate these scores and you get a score of at least 6 eh? if you get a score of at least 6 6 7 and so forth you 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 are happy that you've got a cervix that is favorable for induction if you've got a, a score that is less than 6 eh, 0 to 5 then you've got a, a cervix that is unfavorable for induction the likelihood is that that woman will have a failed induction failed induction will make the diagnosis once we've induced a woman for more than 24 hours and nothing has happened then that is a failed induction so in con uh, methods methods of induction include pharmacological methods and non-pharmacological methods on the pharmacological me methods the most common one that we use is misoprostol uh, which is um, a prostaglandin a prostaglandin dinoprostol also is a prostaglandin and of course we use oxytocin misoprostol misoprostol we can use orally or vaginally Dinoprostone is quite expensive we don't see much of it but the preparations that uh, seem to be around are the vaginal gels oxytocin also is good for induction especially if you've got a good bishop score oxytocin is good for induction then for the non-pharmacological methods you have the stripping of membranes stripping of membranes is also known as sweeping of membranes what you do is you put your finger inside the cervix and you go around and you go around the cervix and you are detaching the membranes from the cervix inside you are detaching the membranes from the cervix that trauma that you cause as you are detaching the membranes gently you are doing it gently but it's causing some micro trauma that promotes the release of prostaglandins and that release of prostaglandins uh, may start the labor so the stripping of membranes is uh, is useful in post deaths for example a woman comes today and she is post deaths she is 40 weeks today 40 weeks plus one uh, and you know that for you to induce a, post, a post death you need to do it at 41 weeks now as you are waiting between today and 41 weeks you may strip the membranes you may sweep the membranes and tell her to go home tell her to go home your hope is that during that period that she's waiting for 41 weeks she may go into labor if she doesn't go into labor then you go to the other methods of induction artificial rupture of membranes also is a useful method for inducing labor especially with a good bishop score balloon catheter is also a, a, a non-pharmacological method that we use for induction of labor so induction of labor is common on our labor wards and you need to be aware that in previous cesarean sections and in women with high parity you may end up with ruptures which may have disastrous consequences for both the baby and the mother the bishop score really helps us to predict the success of induction of labor so uh, thank you for listening and i hope to see you on the next one